Good morning. Larry Osborne, field agronomist for Pioneer Seeds in eastern South Dakota. This morning, I'm scouting a field of seedling soybeans that are having some major issues with cutworm. The cutworm activity in about 20 or 30 acres of this part of the field and another 15 to 20 acres in another part of the field uh, is extremely heavy, probably the heaviest I've actually ever seen in my 20 years of working in crops. I found cutworm uh, in some rows of this field, uh, at least one larvae per every plant or two. And I think we've lost a number of the larvae to the seed treatment insecticide already. And so we're faced with such a high pressure uh, and such a, hard, a large number of, of insects, we've just not been able to, to keep up, uh, even with the, the good seed treatment insecticide that was on this uh, crop. We're losing in the neighborhood of 50 to 100,000 plants per acre. This farmer planted at around 150,000 seeds per acre, had a great emergence, a healthy looking stand. However, a few of those plants began to die uh, early on. Some never made it out of the ground uh, because of cutworm activity. Those cutworms are rapidly developing. We've found pupa in the soil. We found lots of different instar levels. Uh, I'm actually gonna get the insects identified by an entomologist just to confirm that we're dealing with black cutworm. They are indeed a cutworm species that I have uh, collected. The areas of the field affected most severely were, of course, the weediest areas of the prevent plant acres from last season. This spring, those weeds were established and, and re-establishing because of the seed that they laid last fall. They were re-establishing and attracting insect activity. Those larvae fell down into the soil and began to work on these young soybean plants as they emerged. Again, healthy, attractive soybeans to that cutworm activity. And those cutworms are doing a number. It appears that we might have 70 to 80, 90,000 soybeans out here today, and that would be an adequate stand, wouldn't require replanting necessarily. However, as we dig, we find that at least half or two thirds of those soybeans are either fed upon or will be dying shortly because they're nearly girdled with cutworm injury. So the surface doesn't tell the story and even digging uh, a few of the dead plants didn't tell the entire story. We needed to look at, at the stems of the healthy appearing plants. Take a look below ground and see what you're dealing with. Same is true with diseases. You want to look at those roots. So we used our, our agronomist secret weapon, the garden fork, to dig these plants without disturbing uh, and compacting the soil around them so we could freely look at those coleoptiles and the roots and dig for larvae. And I was able to collect uh, quite a number of larvae. In fact, sometimes as many as one or two uh, larvae per plant or two or, or every two or three plants. So that's a heavy infestation. And in fact, we've lost a number of insects due to the seed treatment, I believe. We found dead or dying insects in the field uh, due to the seed treatment, but some of these larvae have made it to the stage where uh, the seed treatment, and of course the seed treatment has, has started to attenuate in the plant, so we're, we believe a rescue treatment of, uh, of an insecticide application to this field is warranted. We're certainly above any economic threshold. We're well beyond that level here. Uh, the farmer is going to replant soybeans into this field soon and is going to spray insecticide as soon as the wind conditions allow. Again, this is Larry Osborne, field agronomist with Pioneer Seeds in Eastern South Dakota. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.